Hi everyone, welcome to Love Blue Creations. I'm Felicia. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's read. All right, so this week's inspiration is the 4th of July and spring. So I wanna show you all a creation that I made, which is going to be in my, my Etsy shop, but this is my rustic 4th of July. It's got the aluminum star, it's got the rustic um, greenery and these beautiful flowers, and I used some burlap uh, colored ribbon with stars and stripes, and I thought that would add to the country look, that rustic look that we're looking for, um, that I was looking for when I was making this read. Now, this grapevine was very wide and um, it was falling pieces. So I used some um, brown twine and um, was able to uh, bring the pieces together and push the uh, twine together to kind of make it smaller. But I love the fact that it's still wide in certain areas that allows it to really stand out and give it that rustic feel that, um, that we're looking for. And yes, I did put a bubble in and I love how I have um, the red, white, and blue, but it's red, cream, and blue, and it goes with the, the uh, burlap look. So the other wreath though I, that I made, and that's a 4th of July wreath, and this one's more in your face, more bang, more 4th of July, more Independence Day, and it's right. So this one is, uh, it's got a lot of different elements in it. It's got the pizzazz, it's got the, the sparkle, and so forth, it has the bow, it has ribbons all around it, it has ties, it has the um, sparkly star, and I tried to have some elements of silver within it as well to help capture that, all the elements that we have in this wreath. So this is a little different, and I love the fact that it pops with everything that's on it. There's some matching elements in it as well. This is definitely on, this one's on a, um, a uh, uh, pine base. So you can see the back pine base on the back. So, and I used, um, of course, a mesh to go around it and, and help to uh, uh, apply all my embellishments. So, the wreath that we're going to make today is totally different. So, I got tired of making the 4th of July wreaths and I do have more materials to make another one. I'm probably gonna make another one. These two will definitely be on my Etsy shop, but I wanted to do spring again with you guys. And I wanted to make a wreath that um, I have made with you all before. Now these elements that these two wreaths that I've made, these definitely have some of the same um, application methods that I've used with you all before. So there's uh, the one that I want to make today is a little different. It's a little different for me as well. We're gonna make this one together and hopefully you'll be inspired to create one of your own. So let's read. So for the next wreath, the ingredients are, we're gonna use this round um, moss base wreath. I think this is really, really pretty. I love how green it is, look how beautiful that is. The thing about this one though, it's it's um, it's not easy to stick uh, picks through it. It's kind of a thick base. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to use to apply our um, florals to it. Uh, this came from Craft Outlet. These, we're gonna use these as well. These came from Hobby Lobby. I've got, I've had these for a while from Hobby Lobby. These came from Michaels. We're gonna use just a lot of greenery. And as you can see, we're doing like a yellow. These have some orange in it theme. I'm gonna use these daffodils. These are cute. And then I have these butterflies. All right, and I've had these for a while. So I'm not sure where I got them from. And then I got this from Michaels as well. I've had this for a while also. So we're gonna use uh, maybe if we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use, try to use all of it just to give it some different texture. And then for the ribbon, I'm just gonna use a solid orange and a solid white. I figured we had enough yellow in our um, greenery, so I think orange and white is gonna make it really pop and bounce off of our green uh, moss base. All right, now let's read. All right, so to, like I said, this uh, wreath base is very dense and it's very difficult to stick um, your pet picks through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a piece of styrofoam and I wish I had some green but I don't. So we're going to improvise and we're going to apply a piece of styrofoam that I cut from a just a round piece of styrofoam that you would typically see when I remember I had to buy these a lot so when you put it together it looks like this. And it's one of those round pieces of styrofoam. They have green ones and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is improvise and cover it with some moss that I have. And so 
but I want to go ahead and apply this first before I cover with moss because I'm going to have to use zip ties to apply it because I want to cover up the zip ties. I don't want them to show through either. So it's the same concept as when I made the, um, I don't know if y'all saw my tutorial on the, the, boot, the beaded hoop wreath. Let's get this in the center. And I use zip ties to attach the um, styrofoam. So, and I wanted a pretty big piece of styrofoam. I, this is all I had for the last um, project that I made. So, and I just didn't realize it and I didn't want to run out to store. So we're going to use what I had. And we're going to zip tie it on really, really good. It's not going anywhere once you get it on there really good. It's nice and sturdy just with one. And I used a long, typically not as uh, the longest one that I had in my workshop. So they have the smaller ones, but depending on you know what you're making and how girth your wreath base is. So this is the typical size of a zip tie and that's that one. This is really long. So I had some in my stash, so that's good. And it's already sturdy, it's on there. All you really need is one. All right. So let's go ahead and cover it a little bit with some of this moss that I have. So that way the white doesn't show through. So we'll just use our glue gun and get the moss on there. And I could have used, you know that, the, the, the pallets of moss that you can buy? The only thing is, is that I don't think I would be able to stick my picks through them through that palette you know so you just want to I, I want I need the the sponginess of this of the um can't talk today yeah of the styrofoam so I can stick everything through so I'm going to keep applying my moss and yes be prepared to have a messy workspace it comes with territory right so and don't worry, the greenery is going to help cover it up as well, but I want it to be as less conspicuous as possible. Make sure you don't burn your fingers like I just did. All right, so get it on there. So when, as you, you can see, it's going to look like that. And um, get as much moss as you can to help cover it up. All right, I don't think I've talked to y'all since um, before Easter, so I hope everybody had a happy Easter. We did, we had about 25 kids, <laughs> a lot of kids. So uh, family and friends, and we had the Easter egg hunt at our house. So it was so much fun, tons of food, tons of family, all the grandbabies, my daughters, their husbands and friends. So it was a great, great day. Um, so anyway, I hope everybody had a good, 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 good weekend. And no, I didn't do a tutorial last week. We got kind of busy and, and time got away from us, me and my husband. So. Apologies on that, but I'm back and doing something different and creative for you all. All right, I think that's good enough for now. And I like how, you know, it's mossy, but it matches our moss base. So we're good. Let's go ahead and start attaching our embellishments. All right, so I wanna start with the tall pieces first and then from there incorporate the rest of them in. So I really, really like this, the look of this uh, floral pick. I love the, the bold orange and the yellow in this. So what I'm gonna do is cut out some enough picks. I probably need about four. And these are very, very thick. So see how thick the, the bases are? So, but that's, that's fine. We're gonna cut it right at the base. Oops, just like that, all right. So, see this one didn't have anything on it, but don't discount it, it can still be used. So let's make sure we get the bases that have the um, orange and yellow flowers. Okay, let's make sure we have a good selection. Now I've had these for a long time. I've never used them, um, but I've always kept them because I knew one day I would need them because I just liked the look of them and the flowiness of them. So basically what we'll do is we're gonna put it on, like I guess on each side like this. Okay, so I'm playing by ear as well, you guys. So this is gonna be um, tall, kind of tall, because we could have went out like this, but that's just, they're too long too long so um, I want them to be tall 
just like that. So we'll kind of put them right here, not in the front that tall, right? So we'll put them right kind of in the middle of the base so they kind of stick out just like that and we'll have a couple in the center. All right, so let's add some glue. Make sure you have your trusty glue sticks, your glue gun, or your glue pot, either or. All right, make sure you get enough glue on there. And again, we're gonna put it about right there. Just like that. Okay, it's already popping the way I want it to, good. All right, so what to do to one side, you wanna to do to the other, so everything's even. Like that so you see how it's coming along all right okay and we're gonna put one in the center for now oopsie another one that didn't have anything on it so now we've got two which is fine because we can add those to the center as well and we can probably put these right here so as a matter of fact I think we're gonna go ahead and do that with these So it's gonna give it some height and some dimension, just like that. See, see how it's coming along? So far, so good. All right, let's get another long piece. And let's get this one about, about right there. I think that's gonna be pretty. And just right there at the center. I could put it right here, but it's too tall. All right. Okay, so this is definitely going to be kind of three-dimensional. Really cool. Really, really neat. Really cool. All right. So what I want to start doing now is kind of filling in the center, and that's where these come in. All right. So let's go ahead and let's add some of these. These are my favorites. I've used these in several um, other designs. It's got the pops of yellow in it, so that's gonna be really pretty. So we're gonna fill in the center, center area with these as well. So the great thing about this design is my glue pot comes in handy. So I like the fact that it's gonna, it makes this work a lot easier and a lot smarter. Something I always, my husband always says is, Nothing works better than when you have the right tools. Everything works better when you have the right tools. So that's always helpful. My thing is, is I didn't have the right color green, um, the right color green styrofoam, so we made it work. So I put three in the center, now I'm gonna put some on the outside. So we're gonna make sure each side has the same amount on each side. So that one went on the outside, this one's gonna go on the outside. Just like that. See how it's coming along? All right, nice, nice, nice. Okay, I think I wanna have one right here as well. Cause we're gonna go ahead and fill it in with the daffodils in a few minutes. And we're gonna put a nice pretty bow right on the front. So that's where the bow is gonna go. So we'll put one here. We're gonna put one here. So what you do in the on each side, oops. Okay, why isn't going in there? Oops. Okay, there we go. Bend it as you need it. Oh my god, it's looking pretty already. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now I think we can kind of fill in. I want to go ahead and start using the daffodils, and then from there, if we need more fillers, we can add more fillers, but let's get our flowers in there. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our daffodils, and we have, we're going to try to use as many as we can to help bring out the white and the yellow within the design. All right, so we're going to cut each one. All right, so I got them all cut. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply them in. So um, some in the front, some in the center. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12. So I could do six on one side. Whatever I do on one side, I need to do six on the other. So we're gonna do it alternative, alternatively. So let's start with, and the great thing about this, it, it does have the metal stem inside. So it's definitely going to push through the way we need it to. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it will. <laughs> I am guessing that it will. So I'm trusting that it will. Alrighty, there you go. It's going in there. So what I probably need to do though is I'm going to go ahead and get my um, my uh, my stem, my um, floral stem. So. I found my floral picks and I've made some changes. So here's what I discovered as I was doing this. And you know what? Nobody's perfect. You're all going to, same with me, change your mind. So what I determined was, is that I do not like the fact that my tall, tall bushes were in the front. They should have been in the back. So what I did was, is I took those out and I moved those to the back. So now you can start seeing that the talls are in the back. All right. And what I may do is add some more talls. I'm not sure yet, but what I want to do is start filling in right up in here with um, with my grass. And I decided to do my daffodils on the front. They'll be right here in the front all around like that. So it'll be a heightened kind of look. So we'll have the talls, then the yellow grass, and then the daffodils in the front. And I'm going to put my bow right in the center, right up in here. So I need to go ahead and work on my bow, but what I wanna do is continue to fill in right up in here where um, where I need to add more grass, more of my um, grassy picks. So I'm gonna do that and fill that in with my grassy picks. And keep in mind as you're putting them in, so you want your stems to kind of be the same size, so they all are kind of the same length. And this gives it its depth. And um, I need to add some more moss there. Now you could have used those spongy, um, that spongy styrofoam too, the floors used, and they add water to it to keep the fresh flowers fresh. But again, I, I use what I had. So again, as a crafter, we use what we got, right? So that's what I'm doing, using what I got. And I think using this moss just kind of gives it some appeal anyway. I wish it was hot. It was hot, 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 hot. Please don't burn yourself like I just did. All right, so it just kind of gives it that, adds to that mossy look that we have with the moss base wreath anyway. So I'm gonna continue to fill in some of the gaps that I have so we don't see those. All right, so I wanted to stop and show you how it's looking so far. So every time I put in a pick in one area, I put another one in, in the opposite area. So keep that in mind as you're creating your arrangements. Um, to do to one side, you definitely want to do to the other. That's important because so it balances out perfectly. And I'm probably going to add some more talls in the back. I probably, I would like to maybe fill it out a little bit more, but let's see how well we do with what we're doing so far. So it's coming along really, really pretty. It's very grassy on the front. It almost looks like this could be like, it could have been in a basket, you know, like this could have been a basket, but What's cool about it is I love this, the green moss base and how it just looks so springy, you know, like it's just, I don't know, this is different. <laughs> it's different for me too. So I bet you all are going, what is she making? I know, right? It was just kind of an idea I had in my head and I was like, we're going to do this. Never seen this done before. So here we go. It's going to happen, Felicia. All right. So bear with me, you guys. So this is a out of my head moment. So ah, I'm excited about it. It looks good so far, huh? Don't you think? I just wonder if I'm putting too much grass in it. I just want to make sure that it, you know, looks good, good and full, right? So I think I'm going to go ahead and do one, another one on this side, another one on that side. And then we can focus on the daffodils. I think those are called daffodils. Look like daffodils to me. So I'm not a flower person. I don't know the names of everything. But if I see it looks pretty, I'm going to use it. I do know hydrangeas because those are my favorite. All right, so there we go. Okay, that's looking full. That's looking good. 
looking good, good, good. So I was thinking that I would put the daffodils kind of in the front and just have them fill the front and some in the, in right up in the here, right in the front and then more right here. But I want to do my bow first. Let's do my bow because I want to make sure that's there and it has a spot before we start putting on flowers. All right, so let me get the bow ready. All right, so I made the bow and I know I didn't um, show you guys, but I, I have my bow tutorial or you see me make bows over and over again. So I didn't bother to just put that in this tutorial at this time, but I wanted to show you guys, here it is. So, but one thing I do wanna keep in mind is that I wanna make sure that I can insert this bow. I'm kind of probably be down here at the bottom a little bit. I wanna insert it into my, um, into my styrofoam. So what I want to do is keep some of my, cinch it up, and I want to keep some of my, of my um, zip tie piece so it has enough so I can stuff it in there. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue on it. I'm going to stuff it right up in the, into our, our base. All right, so I know everything's unique and different. I know. I'm learning too as we go. So I'm like, how am I gonna make this go in there? So the only other alternative would be to have had um, use some stiff, stiff wire and wrapped it through and I could stuck it through that way as well. So either way, I think this turned out really nice and what I'm gonna end up doing is putting in one of these butterflies in the center of the bow and that'll help bring out all the colors that I have in my, in this new creation that we're making today. So excited. So how's, um, so, oh, I have some good news. So I have a, um, a Mother's Day wreath making class coming up uh, next month. I'm really, really excited. It's my first class. Well, actually, I did. Um, I know y'all saw when I posted when I did the um, the wreath class for the the middle school craft club for my niece. And so this one is going to be for um, open to the public, and it's being hosted by my um, my my lady, my hair, the lady that does my hair, my stylist. And um, so she is uh, opening up her salon to have a wreath making class. I'm really excited and um, I've made her a couple of wreaths and um, she loves them. And so she was excited to have me do a class for her. So I'm real excited about that. So I got that in the works and um, yeah. So, and we're gonna be making a really, really pretty wreath and it's made out of grapevine. And it's similar again to the hoop wreath that I made, it's got everything on the base of it. It's for beginners, it's nothing um, really hard to do. And um, yeah, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited to share my craft and have somebody do it with me. And I'm calling it Wreath With Me. So that's my new thing. So my goal is to one day have guests on my, sh on my channel wreathing with me and, um, and being a part of the whole experience as well. So I think that's gonna be something new and something that I wanna do for 2020, well, for the future. So I wanna cut these tails down just a little bit. Okay, so. Alrighty. All right, so let's get these dovetailed. All right. So I'm not sure if y'all had a chance to check out my my shop. I have um, started making shirts, and I have a customer that's going to Canada for the summer, and so I made them some really really cute family shirts. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so I, I got those created, and um, I'm excited about that new part of my my shop line you guys so um and feel free to check it out i have some father's day shirts out there some mother's day shirts and um some of the father's day shirts were my husband's creations <laughs> so i put them together so he liked the sayings so i was like okay so i have a shirt that's called just my father's day shirt and i'm like okay if that's all you want he says that's all i want my father's day shirt so um i added some color to it and then i have a shirt that um that says um, my stain shirt and it has all these stains that you could think of for, you know, from a man's perspective, things that he would be doing and why he has a shirt full of stains. That was his idea as well. And then um, 
we have a um, pretty not bad dad shirt. And I think that one's really, really cute. So that was his idea. Also, um, oh, that's not working. So let's see. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have to add some wire and I have a piece of, um, a piece of, uh, as you can see, let me show you. So a piece of um, some of the zip tie that's showing. So you know what? We're gonna attach this to that piece of zip tie at the bottom. So what I did was I went on ahead and um, I attached a zip tie to the back of my bow. I had to take off the other zip tie because it was too tight. So don't be afraid to, if you have to, you know, redo and undo some things to make things work, you guys, that's okay. Don't freak out. All you gotta do is, um, when I took it off the bow, I held it real steady to make sure nothing came unraveled. Uh, got it on there good enough and loose enough so I could add another zip tie. And so now I'm going to go ahead and attach it at the bottom of my base. There, nice, so it's not so far down. There we go. Okay, so fluff it out just like so. So what I probably am gonna do is add, like I said, some more tall in the back. That way we can have some more orange pop. So, and I like this ribbon, the fact that it's just kind of springy orange and white, nothing special. Well, special, it's beautiful, but nothing, Just it's just kind of pretty in, in itself being orange and white, don't you think? All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and start adding our daffodils. And I've already cut them. So I'm going to have some, some of them be tall in the back, so I have 12. So I'm probably going to do one, two, three, four. Let's cut them down just a little bit. I want to get them all the same size these four so what I did was I took off this sheath there's like a this rubber sheath that's on them and underneath is the wire see I don't need this piece and that's what was making it hard to put in to the um, to the base whoops all right here we go just add some glue there make sure it's on there good stick it right back in the hole good to go see so I want them all the same size, however. So we're gonna start with four for now. So it's four. So we'll just dip it in the glue and we'll get them added. Kind of right, yeah, right where there's gaps. side one on this side again do what do what you do on one side do for the other side alrighty and then two in the center just like that it's kind of peeking through our grass just like that see it's pretty Pretty, pretty, pretty. So then what I want to do with the other ones is I want to cut those down just a little bit more and just have them around here, make them a lot lower, a lot shorter rather. And I probably could have used some more orange, but we're going to add these butterflies. So gonna have some of these throughout as well. So it'll help pick up some of the orange in the back. All right. So I think all the colors coordinate very well. So again, I want these to kind of be in the front. So I'm gonna cut them down way shorter, just like that. So it'll be in the front, just like that. See? So let's get them all the same size. And we're gonna do four for now, so we can see where we are before we cut them all. So we may need some taller ones. So there's four. I'm gonna do exactly what we did in the back. We're gonna do it in the front. So one on this side. One on this side. 
and then two in the center. Just like that. All right, so I have one, two, three, four left. I think I need one more in the center and then I'll have three left. So now I have three left, so I think I'll use those three to just kind of fill in some of the gaps right here. So maybe one, two, and then three right there. So let's put them all the same length, not too short. All right, so we'll put one in the center. Start there first. Here we go. And then one on each side to kind of fill in right up in there, cat a corner. Just like so. Cat a corner, okay. All right, so what I wanna do is take a look at it. Probably should have had it on my stand that really helps when you put it on the stand. You can really see it from, from a distance. All right, so let me stand it up just a little bit. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add some more grass, but I'm gonna cut it shorter. So that way the grass fills in, it's not the, it can be more of a filler rather than so tall. So we're going to use our grass. And I'm gonna use, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna cut these down. We have three to use. Oh, and I brought these, these are my floral picks. So I don't didn't need them once I figured out I could take that sheath off of the daffodils. So now I can save those for something else. But you can always use your um, picks when you cut them. You can use these too. So you can always keep those on, on handy in a stash somewhere so you can use them for future reference. You cut them down and you can use floral wire, I mean floral ribbon full tape rather, to um, wrap them around those stems. So you can always improvise. Just because you don't have these wooden ones, you can take these and use them as well. So put that in mind. So let's clean up my space a little bit here. All right. So let's go ahead and push these up. So these are push-ups. And we're going to cut them down to make them shorter. So we have shorter pieces of grass throughout. So we can fill in the fill in the um, the open spaces. Okay, so push them up. All right, and let's cut them down a little bit. So I want them all the same size. And when I hold it up, I can definitely see gaps. So I'm gonna fill in some of the gaps. I'm gonna keep some a little longer. So let's do that. Let's keep some long, and then let's add some short ones kind of around in this area. So we're gonna do about three, keep three long. Oops. So that we can see where see where your gaps are and put your, whatever greenery you use. So you didn't have to use the grass. You could have used tall ferns. You could have used um, some just beautiful tall pieces. You could have done this whole thing with eucalyptus. That would have been really, really pretty. You know how eucalyptus comes in so many different colors. I like the red eucalyptus, that, that reddish kind. That reddish color is really, really pretty. All right, so, so there y'all can see. See how I'm filling in the gaps? All right. So now I wanna go ahead and let's see, do I really need to add some short pieces? Maybe right here in the front. Well, I gotta add my butterflies, but, okay, let's go back because I do wanna add my butterflies and I do want to add, it's almost as if I need some flowers right here in the front, some more flowers. All right, so next thing I wanna do is go ahead and add some butterflies throughout. So I wanna keep them long and stemmy, but I do wanna have one in the center of my bow here. So let me go ahead and cut that one off real quick. It's gonna go just right there, kind of like 
just placed real pretty in the, in the center just like that. So looks good. Let's get it glued. Glued in there. Just gonna lay on there. Just lay in there really, really daintily. Just like that. Ooh. For all you crafters out there, you probably don't have fingerprints like I <laughs> I don't from all of the, the glue. So, and I want it to lay in there, so I'm gonna kind of glue it a little bit to the bow as well, just to have it lay the way I want it to lay. Just like that, so pretty. Okay, I'll just, just glue that one just a little bit too. Here we go. Okay, now let's position our butterflies. So keep them, I like the green, so we'll keep the greenery on it. So keep them kind of long, push it up a little bit and we'll just place them in there throughout. Oh, Bella. <laughs> Woo, she is not happy being in there. All right, you guys, so, all right. So we have, I'm not sure if I wanna use all of them. So just kind of position them in there, just like that. Keep them long, keep them stemmy, just like that. So just kind of look like the butterflies are flying through the field. This is what this looks like, a field, so pretty. Turned out really, really nice. Again, what you do to one side, you wanna to do to the other. Oh, and I got the butterflies from at home. That's where I got them from. I got some pink ones too. So, let's just see how many we can add to make it just kind of pop with some color. Let's bring out the orange from the tall stems in the back and just let them be flowy just like that. I like how they're just flowy. Keep them long. Probably put this one in the center. Need to hear it crunch. I didn't know it's in there. Crunch, crunch. There we go. Crunch, crunch, crunch. All right. That means, and then you can definitely bend your stems. It's all wire. There you go. See how pretty that is. I think three is good. Um, let's see. Yeah, I like that. So far, so good. I love it. I think we're done. I think my creation has been completed. Yay. All right, for the final reveal. Okay, here we go. Final reveal. This was a very unique wreath, I know, and so, um, but it turned out beautifully, so here we go. Which way I turn it? Great rest of your week. Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good weekend.